you cruising through life not always knowing what direction you were headed? Let Live On Purpose with Dr. Paul Jenkins be your guide. Live On Purpose will give you insights into your life and show you how you can become the driver and captain of it. No more aimless wandering. By learning the principles that govern happiness and wealth, you will be able to make personal progress that you have only dreamed possible. And now, here's your host, the shrink who expands your life, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul, the shrink who expands your life, bringing you another episode of Live on Purpose Radio. As always, I am excited to have a great guest with me on the line today. I will introduce her first, and then we're going to have some exciting discussion. My guest today is Colleen O'Donnell. Colleen is one of my coaches. I got to know her oh, about a year ago. Uh, through a program that I'm doing called The Strategic Coach, and I've mentioned that on the show before. Colleen is this just insightful and astute businesswoman, and in addition to that, she is a mom. And that's saying a lot there already, isn't it, Colleen? Yeah, that's a lot. Thanks. (laughs) That's actually the best one, isn't it, being a parent? You know, that is where it all comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. As far as your happiness in life and the meaning that you get out of life, if if you can really nail what you're doing as a parent, it's everything else falls into place. Doesn't it? It really does. And you know what? My hat really goes off to you because you're a single mom. Yes, yes. I've been a single mom since my son, Addison, was three, and he's now 20. So a little bit of time doing the single mom thing. So you've got some experience. You know well, yeah, absolutely. You know, I was just going to say, uh, Colleen, that I do another uh, podcast for for parents, and we're constantly taking on topics about how to become a better parent or how to deal with this role that so many of us have to raise the next generation. And uh, I'm I'm thinking this particular episode of Live on Purpose Radio is going to be posted on that site too. Oh, yeah. we, well, it's because become as we become a better parent, we really become a better person. Mm-hmm. That's true. And you found that the principles in, in your parenting also apply in the business world and in your relationships with other people. Isn't that true? Correct. It really does. I mean, it is all about relationships and how we create that with our kids and with people we work with and work mm-hmm. for and... Everybody in the world, actually. Colleen, I am so excited that you've joined me for this show today. It's, Thanks. Well, I'm, I'm real excited to be here, talk about generous kids. Well, and you know, it's taken me, I don't know, about six months to work out the schedule so that we could be on the same line at the same time. Well, we have busy schedules, don't we? And I remember it was your birthday last week. That's right. It was your birthday, yeah. <laughs> we could call you and sing to you. You know what? That would be really cool. Okay, we will. <laughs> oh, but I won't hold you to it. Okay, good. You know, um, one of the reasons uh, for the listeners that it's been hard to get a, to, to just nail down a time besides my busy schedule, Colleen is very, uh, very busy with her, her practice. She's in financial services and also is very sought after as a presenter, a speaker, a coach. And so, Colleen, you're just, you're traveling a lot. You're, you're going out there and just creating all kinds of value for lots of people. Yeah. And, uh, and one of the things, and you already introduced it uh, briefly, is this little book that you made. I said little because in size, it's not very big. Yeah, it is. It's a little book. We wanted it to be a quick read for any busy parent. So it is, it is little, but it's packed full. And this book is called Generous Kids. And the subtitle is Helping Your Child Experience the Joy of Giving. And Colleen, I've referenced this before because I read this. Uh, right after you you introduced it to us at our strategic coach meeting, mm-hmm. I read the book and I, I was immediately engaged in this project that you that you have to create more generosity, uh, not only in our kids, but for generations to come. Because as you learn these principles and apply them in your life, you then naturally pass them on to your kids. And uh, this is a great mission. I want to 
turn this over to you for just a few minutes to talk about this project and to tell us a little bit more of your story and where you're coming from with Generous Kids. Well, I guess um, the story in the sense of helping kids and helping parents with generosity truly um, probably began as a single parent, um, having to take that role on and having to work at the same time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I did and made a very conscious decision, I only have so much time in my day. And um, in order to be there for my son and to work um, and to help at school, I took on things at the school that was involved directly with the kids. Mm -hmm. So when Addison was in elementary school, I would read in the library or um, do things with Boy Scouts. I was very involved with Boy Scouts as he was growing up, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. And then um, in high school, Addison was very involved in the theater and all kinds of different things at the school. So I was up at the high school a lot on a pretty regular basis. And that's actually how this concept for Generous Kids came about. Mm -hmm. um, it happened in January 2005. If you'll remember, we had the tsunami happen in December 2004. That's right, right after it, Christmas. Yeah, do you remember that? Yeah. And do you remember yes, do. everybody coming together to help support the victims? You know, we had past presidents coming together. We had this whole sense of community. Mm -hmm. And just the same at my son's high school, they did all kinds of things to help raise funds for the tsunami victim. Mm -hmm. And it was in January I was up there at the high school and waiting on my son because that's a lot of what parents do <laughs> to uh -huh. pick them up from their different activities. Right. And there was a group of kids standing there, and um, I was just really shocked because they were talking about how stupid it was that they were raising money, that they didn't even know that the money was going to go to the tsunami victims. You know, where does it go? Who knows anything about it? Mm -hmm. And I, I was just, I was shocked. And mm -hmm. then they started talking about community service. Now, I don't know about, um, about your state, but in Texas, most of the high schools, community service is required. And even mm -hmm. in some of the elementary schools. And oh, the kids uh -huh. started talking about it like it was a horrible thing. Mm, some and chore or something that they had to do. Like a, yeah, like a chore. Like, and they actually said, it's become just like another thing for homework. Mm. And I was, I was shocked. I was shocked. And I woke up in the middle of the night and went, oh, my gosh. If these kids are so disconnected from their giving, was it just a small group of kids? Or was it, is it... Is this a big thing? Is this something mm -hmm. that we as the adults need to really be careful and pay attention to? Mm -hmm. And that's really what happened. I went to the dean of students and said, because I'd known the dean of students pretty well from my son's freshman year in high school. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, uh -huh. um, he, had, he got to spend a lot of time down there, so I got to spend a lot of time there. Um, just a great lady, and told her about the conversation, and I said, listen, I would like to see if this is really an issue. And I'd like to do just a quick questionnaire. Three, three questions. Mm -hmm. What does giving mean to you? Describe a time that you gave and it made a difference. And describe a time that someone gave to you and it made a difference. And send that out. And it was because of the answers and then because of the answers we got from over a thousand kids that Generous Kids was created. Wow. So the kids were giving you feedback about what giving meant to them. Yes. And how it had made a difference in their life. Right. And the, the interesting thing was so many of them saw giving as something that you do to people less than you. Which, whoa, isn't that a big disconnect? Wow. Uh -huh. okay, first off, they had to, and these are from 3-year-olds to 20-year-olds we did this survey. And even little five-year-olds, and they were all different races, all different socioeconomic levels, even little five-year-olds in really um, low-income schools talking about giving as something you do to somebody, you know, on the street or something, somebody worse than them. Not very many of the kids talked about 
just simple things like listening to a friend. They, you know, that's something that somebody you do with somebody equal. But mm-hmm. no, they were describing it as something that you do to somebody less than. So that's why Generous Kids came out because there was this real disconnect, and a lot of kids didn't remember a time, almost twenty percent, that they gave and it made a difference. Mm. Ooh, kind of scary. And wow. a, there was about 15% that couldn't describe a time when someone gave to them and it made a difference. So just very disconnected from the whole idea of giving. Really. And what we found through this little kid, little book called Generous Kids is we've got to change it with our kids. We as the adults, as parents, grandparents, teachers, we've got to teach generosity as a habit. Mm. Giving is really taught, and we're kind of, we've kind of forgotten that. Mine is what's instinctual. You know, the little kids, mine, 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 mine. Mm-hmm. That's what's instinctual. Giving is taught. Just like the habit of brushing your teeth, what we've learned is we need to get back into teaching the habit of giving. Which involves an, an entire change of paradigm, too. It does, doesn't it? I was just thinking as you were introducing this, Colleen, that uh, scarcity, having kind of a scarcity mindset causes you to want to hold or hoard or cling to stuff and to what you've got. Mm -hmm. And it does require a shift into a more abundant mindset to be able to give. Right. And to share. And and we've all had those experiences being around selfish kids. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, that Home Alone. Do you remember that movie, Home Alone? Oh, yeah. Uh (laughs) Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the selfish, self-centered. I mean, we've been around that. We've all been around it. And it's a huge conversation in the 20-something about this very self-focused generation. And Mm -hmm. what we really believe is that we're just missing that little link that's called giving's a habit. It's a habit. Mm. It's not something we can not instinctual. It's not something that we as parents can just say, oh, they can learn that on their own. It's something Mm -hmm. that we have to pay a lot of attention to. And as we develop the habit ourselves, as parents, we'll be in a better position to help our kids with that. Yes, absolutely. What's been fun about Generous Kids, it came out in September 2007. What's been fun, so it's not been out very long, is that a lot of parents have, have said, Gosh, this reminds me I haven't been doing this myself. All right. A wake-up call to the parents. Yes, yes. We'll be right back with Colleen O'Donnell. This is Ross Kellen Moore of Creation Tree Coaching, and I've got two questions for you. Who are you? What do you want? You see, I've figured out that you and I can absolutely create anything that we really want. But to do that, we've got to be absolutely clear on who we really are and what we really want. So what do you want? More financial abundance? More fulfilling relationships? A higher level of health and fitness? How about finding your work that allows you to create massive value for others in the way that you love most? Welcome to Creation Tree Coaching. We are the world's premier provider of abundance, education, and resources. We are here to help you create the life you really love. Begin now at creationtreecoaching.com. Check out our live teleseminar classes and podcasts. Get to know our coaches and schedule a coaching session. Explore training for your business and employees. Welcome to Creation Tree Coaching and a whole new world that you create on purpose. Hi, this is Jason Adams, one of the co-founders of CashflowParadigm.com. We created Cashflow Paradigm as a way to help others look at money differently. What are your beliefs about money? Is it good or bad? Many people have beliefs that limit their control over money and don't even realize it. The thing most people don't realize is that their beliefs about money greatly affect the amount of money and prosperity they have. It's all about your paradigm. Come play a fun game with us called Cashflow 101, created by best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki. Come meet new people and check your paradigm as we learn principles that govern our personal and financial lives while having fun together. Currently, we are holding monthly game nights in Provo and St. George, Utah. 
Go to our website at www.cashflowparadigm.com to register for upcoming events. That's www.cashflowparadigm.com. Welcome back. Creating generous kids for generations. That's what the mission is of Generous Kids, the book, and Generous Kids, the mission, as headed up by Colleen O'Donnell. And you've given a good introduction to this, Colleen. I wanted to to jump on a definition here. Okay. And uh, maybe not so much a definition as a discussion about what, what giving is does for you. Uh, it, it's obvious that if we were to go out and give to other people, it would benefit those other people. But I think that you and I both understand that it's the very best way to get what you want is to help other people get what they want. Right, right. Would you agree with that concept? Absolutely, absolutely. What, and, and I want to draw on another aspect of your experience, because not only are you a mom... But you do a lot of coaching with entrepreneurs, with successful business people uh, all over the country. What have you found is the effect in someone's business life when they have an attitude of generosity and giving? What have you noticed? Well, I think the first thing is, is they're much happier people. Right. Don't, don't you think? I mean, I think that is absolutely, because when we are generous and thankful at our core, if that's a part of who we are, if it's a habit, as we like to talk about, um, it just makes you a happier person. And it also helps you see, I think you see very differently when, when you're grateful and thankful and generous. Um, in the sense of business success, you know, I'm very lucky and very blessed, as you said, to be involved with people like yourselves and Strategic Coach. And, mm-hmm. I mean, what a great group of people who give. People like yourself. I mean, I'm just so impressed by Live on Purpose and all the things you've created. Well, I mean, you're one of the most generous people I know. Just think of all the information that you're getting out there to people. Mm. So it, it helps you personally, it helps your business, it helps your family, it helps your friends, it helps your community. I mean, Mm -hmm. creating the habit of giving helps build stronger families, it increases your communication, it creates shared values, it creates a stronger business. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I have seen too. And as as you have pointed out, you know, like this show, Live on Purpose Radio, I'm not sending anybody a bill for this. Right. I want to put it out there because I get feedback from people that it is valuable, that it helps them in their life. And I think the more I can do that for people, the better off I will be too. Correct. It is creating that change. Mm -hmm. Creating the change. Now, for kids, there's a lot of research, and it's in in the book. My Mm -hmm. co-author, you know, I'm a mom, an entrepreneur, um, you know, all different businesses. But my co-author, Lynn Baker, has that wonderful academic background. Is a master's, has 20 years um, in schools, um, 10 years as a principal. I mean, she's been in the trenches for years. And she actually did all the research um, that went into the book that we've made very quick and very, you know, brief mm-hmm. and to the point, as you've read. Um, yes. we, we didn't want it to become a Ph.D. thing that you had to trudge through, um, we as parents need something quick and easy that we can take and use. But when in doing all the research, there's so many um, statistics out there that show when we get into giving and we get our children into giving, our children, during their whole school year, they're more likely to have academic success. They're less likely to abuse drugs and alcohol. It's tough mm-hmm. when you're giving to also be in the middle of that drug-alcohol issue that has become such a difficult thing, especially for high school. Um, There's a lower incident of adolescent depression and suicide. 
because, once again, when you're giving, it's hard to just be totally focused on yourself. And then the other thing we found, especially um, in schools where leadership skills are not taught as the norm, when the kids get into giving um, and they're doing community service projects and they're creating a difference in the world, they really create really good leadership skills. And it's really a foundation for them going into college and into their life, into their work world. So, so there's a lot of benefits. So this, this simple concept of generosity and the habit of giving has so many implications, and it, it plays out in so many ways in kids' lives. This is something that I've really appreciated about the book, too, Colleen, and I, I, I think I had heard from you before that Lynn was the one who had done a lot of the research on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just drives home the fact that, that this is not a superficial or cursory kind of an issue. This gets right to the, to the heart of some things that are very important to create the kind of life that is going to be enjoyable for the child, uh, but also create a big impact on society through building leaders for tomorrow. Yes, and you know, it's real interesting. Uh, one of the books um, that we referenced, Why Good Things Happen to Good People, um, there is a study from the 1920s where they have followed these people, and those that were giving and vo- involved in volunteerism and everything, they mm-hmm. are healthier, they are happier. I mean, this is o- an over 50-year study mm. that they've done this, that they see the effects throughout their entire adult life, which is amazing. The mm-hmm. things that we could teach our kids, teaching them the habit of giving, we teach it now, and we're affecting them throughout their entire life. And in turn, generations to come. Yes, yes. This is this is a foundational principle because in order to develop that habit, you have to change the way you think. And changing the way you think changes your whole life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's the power of having that, that kind of a paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it changes the way you think, and it changes what you do. Mm-hmm. What you do. You know, one of our big issues today is um, our children becoming screeners. Have you heard that word, screeners? It is, you know, on the computer screen, oh. on the text messaging, on the phone, you know, um, the, on the TV screen. Um, and what happens then is they become very disconnected from other people. And, it, I mean, it's really having an effect in our youth. And so by helping teach your kids the habit of giving, you're also helping them make connections with other people. Not with screen. Right. You know, as you're saying that, I was kind of chuckling under my breath there because one of the consequences that I talk to parents about sometimes as we're working through discipline techniques and so on yeah. is a suspension of screen privileges. Oh, really? That's, there you go. So I've used that word before, and, and it, it applies to so many aspects of their life. But I think you're right. You know, in fact, a lot of the kids, we had a call not too long ago on our parental power set. Uh, where we were talking about technology mm-hmm. and kids and, and how technology affects our kids. And a lot of them are really connecting with each other through these little screens, you know, through the text message, through through IM, through emails. Um, and that's not a bad thing. That's just what it is. But I think I think your point is well taken, too, that, that it, it's another step of separation from the actual human being. It's when you're doing like a community service project, when you're working with other people or you're tutoring um, someone from your class, if you're good in math and you're tutoring someone else, um, when, you're, when you're doing screens, um, the interaction is much more limited than when you're with that person and doing that thing. And actually, that's one of the things that we learned from doing the questionnaire is that the kids that were involved um, in activities where they were involved with other people um, mm-hmm. or that whatever their involvement was, say it was the tsunami, say it was giving money, but if they got a video back from the people that they gave money to or pictures where they saw where they made a difference, one of the biggest things that we found 
was that their hearts needed to be touched. And isn't that true with us mm-hmm. as adults, as well as our kids? If our hearts are touched, it makes that difference. That's Huge. right. And you, the neat thing about about giving and gen- generosity is that you you can feel that on both ends mm-hmm. of the giving, whether you're giving or receiving. And it's a little different experience on either end of that. But your heart can be touched in either way. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Psychologically, this is a really important issue because it's it's our feelings that create for us the templates or the beliefs that we carry in our subconscious mind. And that's that's important because you're going to do everything based on those beliefs and those templates. So if you can have a moving, touching experience with something that's principled as giving and generosity, it then creates an... It's it's like it creates a new creature inside of you. It does. It really does. And what we've tried to help the schools see in their community service is, you know, number one, the kids have to have ownership. You know, when they're younger, you may have to direct them more, but they still like it to be about their ideas, and especially if they're in high school. Um, but we've got to make sure that their hearts are touched. So... Like I said, if they're being a tutor, you know, that's pretty easy to see that little person that you're helping or the person your same age helping, see them advance and and get that warm feeling like you just talked about, that template that that touches them. But there are other things that need to be done, like money does need to be raised for different things. Or um, one of the kids did the Undy 500. The Undy 500 is where they collected 500 t-shirts and underwear. Um, Well, that was one thing, but guess what happened when he went to the shelter that he was doing the collection for and stayed with these people for the day? That's what touched his heart. That's Uh what made the difference. Yeah, that that human element. Yeah. Where they get to actually connect. You know, I I had a bunch of guys, in fact, I think, um, I can't remember if you were involved in this, Brennan. I've got my son Brennan here running the show today. And uh, a group of boys in our neighborhood went over and helped a neighbor to rake up some leaves, um, you know, just kind of get the yard spruced up for the spring. Mm -hmm. And this lady was so touched by what these boys did. I don't know how much she communicated to them right then, but she sent them a little note afterwards, a thank you note. And she expressed how much that had touched her and how much that meant to her. What a difference. And it just cemented it into the minds of these boys, too. Absolutely. This was an important experience. Well, we'll be right back after this next break with Generous Kids. This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com with the World of Ideas Report. When Belay bought a used car for his son at an auction and it snowballed into a new company, the car was totally covered with dog hair. He spent nearly half a back-breaking day struggling with a lint brush, masking tape, and a vacuum just to do a mediocre job and couldn't help but chant to himself, there's got to be a better way. With over 25,000 tons of pet hair shed by pets in the U.S. every year, when Belay started getting ideas, frustration turned to inspiration when Mr. Belay envisioned the ideal tool for the task, a giant piece of tape that would get all the hair off of the chair at once. With just a few of these sheets, he could have turned a job that took hours into something that would have taken less than 10 minutes. And that was just the car. He only dared to imagine the potential inside the house. When Belay soon launched Sticky Sheets with his wife Rebecca to share his invention with frustrated pet owners everywhere. Sticky Sheets was soon featured on As Seen on TV and is now available in pet stores all over the world. I recently met with Wen and his dedicated team. He said Sticky Sheets was one of those ideas you just never want to say. I regret not doing something about it. 
This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com, with the World of Ideas Report. I've got a great idea. Wouldn't you like to know? You probably can't bear it, so I guess I'll have to share it. I thought of it a moment ago. Thank you for joining me for the Live on Purpose radio podcast. It is truly an honor to be a part of your prosperity team. Please visit my website, drpaul.org, to get connected with other tools for you and your family. There you will find links to my weekly e-zine, Empower, Harnessing the Power of the Mind, and to the free Parental Power Teleconference that I host every week with my wife, Vicki. You can also check out upcoming events or pick up powerful information products. Feel free to contact me directly with questions, comments, or to book me for your company or private event. Email me through drpaul at liveonpurposeradio.com. And when you dream, dream big, as big as the ocean. So, Colleen, I want to get into another little piece of this. Okay. You mention in your book, I like the way you've, uh, you've broken it up, by the way. Uh, the way Thanks. you and Lynn have done this is, is really accessible. You've, you've shown how to deal with kids of different ages uh-huh. and how to give three specific things, and they all start with T. Yeah, the three T's. The three T's. Would you share with us what those three T's are? And let's just have a little discussion about that. Sure, sure. When we when we talk about getting into giving, we really want, as, as parents and any of us working with kids, to make it very simple. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's something we can do every day. It's fun. You know, just smiling at someone is giving. So we talk about the three T's. And a lot mm-hmm. of um, religious organizations, groups, um, have used the three T's um, over the centuries. The first one is time, giving of your time. Mm. You know, it it is a wonderful thing that any of us can do. That's when we do something like letting someone in in front of us in the grocery store who only has two items. Well, when our Mm. children see it, remember, they're watching us all the time. The question is, is what they're seeing what we want them to see? That's right. So when we do something simple, like giving of our time, letting someone in front of us in the grocery line, or smiling, or listening to a friend, or listening to our child, Mm. or, you know, when the freeway's so full and we let someone in in front of us and we say to our child, you know, this is what we do, we give. Mm -hmm. We start creating that habit. So it... The first one is time, and one of my favorite, you know, little stories on that was um, this group of kids and parents that that created baby shower in a box. It was for um, moms who weren't going to have all the resources when they had their baby, so they created baby shower in a box. They weren't going to have their friends do um, parties for them, so these kids and parents got together and did it. Maybe shower in a box. They took their time to get all their friends and families to donate all these different items that they would need, like a regular baby shower, diapers and pacifiers and bottles and all that stuff. So they took their time, created all these great flyers, and created this wonderful experience for these moms that weren't going to have anything. Mm. So it, it's, it can be very simple, but the first T is time. I want to comment about that one because I personally feel that this is the most valuable resource that we have to share. Yes, that's what Brennan, that's what your whole, the whole group did with raking. That's giving their time. That's right. Yeah. And it yeah. combines the other two T's in an interesting way. We'll get to those in just a minute as well. But, you know, I just I had an inspiring meeting with another coach of mine just this past week who is doing some some things that have have inspired me personally. He has developed a process with his family where he gives 2 hours of his time to each family member every week. 
Wow. And that's, you know, that's going to sound to all of us busy people out there, it's going to sound pretty phenomenal. That's fabulous. To do that, and I think he's got four or five kids. Oh, wow. So that adds up really quickly. But, you know, he, he was sharing with me that this really, in his mind, is the most valuable thing that he can give his kids. There's a lot of things they can do if they have the time that's given to it. Isn't that amazing? Because truly, you know, all of those things that we give that stuff, a lot of those things just get broken. But that time creates those memories. I Mm -hmm. mean, thank you, Brennan, for being in the studio. And we're going to pick on you just a little. But the raking and all of y'all together, that created a memory that you'll never forget. It's like these kids and their parents doing baby shower in a box. When we give uh-huh. our time, that's something that's just so, it leaves such an impression. It, you know, it's just transformative. It's really one of the most personal things that you can give to someone. Yeah. Oh, that's a great, that's a great story. Well, great story. Uh, as you think about that, you know, that really is true because what do you control more than your time? And yeah. the way that you use your time. I joke with some of my clients sometimes that they come in and say, I don't have enough time. Mm-hmm. And it's always a lie. Because they, <laughs> they have the same amount that we do, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> it's just, and it's a renewable resource. You get in fresh 24 tomorrow. Yeah. But you use all of it. You use absolutely all of it. You spend all of your time every uh-huh. single day. Mm-hmm. The only question is, how are you spending it? And if you choose to spend that, on someone else, if you choose to give your time, that is such a choice gift because it's so personal. Yes, you know, we talk about this when we talk about making things intentional. When we give talks for generous kids, a lot of times people will say to Lynn or I, because we talk about 30 minutes a week, well, we just don't have 30 minutes a week. Well, right. and here this man's giving two hours to each one of his family members. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it really shows us You know, when you look at that, and I love that renewable resource, when you look at your time, it really shows us where our values are. And if we don't have 30 minutes a week to give an intentional act of giving with our kids, where, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? You know, I had another colleague, uh, actually, you know, I can't remember if this came up in one of our meetings, Colleen, but it was, you can always tell what's important to someone through two documents. Yeah, this is, uh uh-huh. Their calendar. And their mm-hmm. checkbook. Yeah. Right? That's true. That's true. How are you spending your time? How are you spending your money? And those those two things are very close to each other, too. Yes, yes. And the one thing is, for people of affluent means, you know, it's so easy to write the check. But is that the habit that you want your kids to see? Because when we just write the check, guess what happens? Our hearts aren't touched. You know, it's that time that touches our heart. Mm-hmm. I mean, the checkbook follows if we're doing something with it. But if we just write a check, our hearts don't get touched. And that's what those kids were saying that raised the money for the tsunami victims. Their mm-hmm. hearts weren't touched. Right. So time, that, that's just such a, it's just such, so important for the three T's. So that's the first of the three T's, giving your time. Mm-hmm. The second one, the second T is talent. And sometimes it gets a little confusing, but time. For me, um, if I go and um, answer the phones at a nonprofit organization, that's giving my time. I'm not really talented at that. I can do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But giving my time where that would be a talent for me is something like I do with coaching or getting information out about generous kids. So a talent is something, you know, a God-given gift. Um, We have this story on our website about a boy by the name of Clayton who um, for over eight years he has refurbished old bicycles and given them out at Christmas time. And it's like 800 bicycles they've done over the years now. And, of course, now he's got his friends and buddies and family members and adults all helping. But that's a talent because he was able to figure out how to redo these bicycles. He started with a few at a time, 
Okay, that's pro- that's a talent that I don't have. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I would not be putting new chains on bicycles. Okay, so that's mm-hmm. talent. Um, we had, um, and we'll go back to those screeners that we talked about earlier. You know, there's a lot of very talented high school and even junior high kids that are able to do computer activities. Where how could we use that as talent? Well. They could do. They could go and work with seniors and help them learn how to get on the computer. I mean, even turning it on sometimes is really hard. Mm-hmm. Or learn how to email. They don't know how to email. Right. <laughs> or one of our one of our um, kids, Ryan. He is. He is. I think a, he's in eighth. He's graduating from eighth grade, and he is very good with photography. And he's doing documentaries for Family History. Uh-huh. That's giving talent. Something that right. you, know, you have extra um, that God has given you. Maybe it's a good thing in math or something like that that you can help share with somebody who's struggling. Mm-hmm. That's talent. Well, and as you referred back to the screeners again, I've got, I, I shared with you that I have three teenage sons. Sons, yes. I was going to say this is the part that they could do on talent. <laughs> well, they are all very adept at computer skills. I have no idea how to run this podcast. Right. I don't know how to die. I'm a shrink. Yes. You know, <laughs> put me on yeah. an interview or in front of somebody or something, I'm doing great, but uh, I'm really not very good with the technical stuff. And so here they are sharing their talents. Absolutely. Which helps me to share my talent. Mm-hmm. And that's what giving's all about. The other comment that I wanted to make about the talent portion comes back to some things we've, uh, we've talked quite a bit about, Colleen, in that group that, uh, that we're in. And that is unique abilities, yeah. which is just a concept that uh, comes through the strategic coach that, that says everybody has a unique set of talents and skills and something that they bring to the table that is unique. And when you figure out what that is and start to give it and start to share it with other people, that's what really creates the maximum value for other people. Yes, yeah. because you love doing it. You have mm-hmm. such a passion for it. You have a superior skill. You create energy for everybody around you when you're operating in your unique ability. And you never end with your learning. It's like with you and mm-hmm. your podcast. You will never end learning how to do better and better podcasts. That's right. And Brennan will probably never end learning how to do it technically. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. And that's what really wows other people, too. This is what really touches their heart, because when you're doing it, it, it just it grabs them. It, yeah. People will engage with that because they're so pleased with what it is that you're offering them. And I've had so many clients who really don't appreciate what they bring to the table. But the combination of their talent and personality, if they will just offer it, Absolutely. And and stop holding that to yourself, folks, you know. Get it out there where where other people can benefit from the talents that you have. Well, and that's one of the things that as we go back to our kids and we as parents are helping them learn this habit of giving, we can help them pick things to, that they really have a unique ability in doing that they love to do. You know, mm-hmm. if what they love to do is singing, mm-hmm. you know, Fixing a bicycle probably isn't the direction you want them to go if they don't have any bicycle fixing skills. Let them go sing to people. Right. Create opportunities for them to do what's Mm -hmm. within their skill set and talents. Absolutely. Beautiful. we got one more tea when we come right back. Okay. If the pile of books you want to read is growing faster than the pile you have read, then Abundant Reading Systems can help you. After taking Abundant Reading Systems course, I dramatically increased my ability to expand my knowledge in a much more efficient way. My fastest test today was in the 7,000 words per minute. I highly recommend this program from what I've seen it do for other people who've been through the entire program and from what I've seen in myself today. I've teamed up with Abundant Reading Systems to offer a single day intensive speed reading workshop that will at least double your reading speed, guaranteed. This belief started to grow inside of me that I thought, you know, I can really do this. I can read, you know, as fast as I let myself read. 
and uh, ended up doubling my time, my speed reading time, which was really good. This is David Hinton, founder of Abundant Reading Systems. I want to personally invite you to join us for our next event. Visit AbundantReadingSystems.com now. Abundant Reading Systems, reading at the speed of imagination. This is Kirk Weasler to tell you about MoreBetterBooks.com. MoreBetterBooks.com is where you can find more better books for a more better life. Not only that, let me tell you about some of the very fun and cool select titles on MoreBetterBooks.com. You want to get a copy of The Dog Poop Initiative. This best smelling book could change your life forever. It certainly changed the lives of thousands of Boeing employees as well as school teachers, parents, leaders across the United States and in Israel and in Germany. And you can get your own copy at morebetterbooks.com. Whoa, that's not all. What about The Cookie Thief? This classic tale told in a rhyming format, fully illustrated with very fun hit messages. Pick up a copy now today on morebetterbooks.com. Other great titles there, Finding Your Pathway to Mastery, Beyond Illusions, Make It Great. These titles are only available on morebetterbooks.com. Go to morebetterbooks.com today and begin to have a more better life and live that life on purpose. So, Colleen, before we get to that third T, I was just thumbing through generous kids during the break here, and I wanted to share with our listeners just an example of what we're talking about here. We've been, uh, the, the last thing that we're talking about is sharing your talent. And I mentioned earlier that this book is broken up into a very useful kind of a format where you as a parent can just go right to whatever it is you're looking for. So, for example, I'm, I'm, on chapter 14 here, talented preteens, simple ways for ages 8 through 12 to share their talent. And then there's a bunch of bullet points here. Things like help the artistic ones design and paint a mural for their school. Help them make and decorate a holiday cake for someone special. Help them design and make a new kid survival kit for new kids in their school. You know, there's just some fun ideas to get parents thinking about how to put their kids into a position where they can start to share their talents. There's other sections in here about time and also about the third T, which we're getting to next. Okay, so do you want to take us to that third T now, Colleen? Absolutely. It is treasure. So we have time, talent, and the third T is treasure. Treasure. Yes. So yes, it is things like, you know, writing a check for we as adults and maybe some kids, but really it is about treasure, something that's important to us, or important to our little heart. For Mm -hmm. three to eight years old, that's something like sharing their toys. That's a treasure that they have, or sharing their crayons, things Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. As we get older, um, I've got a great story. There was um, a young man, young man, meaning he's seven years old, whose parents um, were involved with the Ronald McDonald House, which is just a great organization that... um, has homes for families when their kids are in the hospital. Right. And mm-hmm. he had been, you know, seeing his parents there and going down and helping with them. And it became time for his birthday, He's seven years old. And he said to his parents, I'd like to invite my seven friends, but only if they'll bring presents for the kids at Ronald McDonald House. Oh. So his treasure, his birthday treasure, he wanted to give to someone else. So that's Mm -hmm. just a fabulous example of treasure. Another one um, that's on uh, the Generous Kids website is a story about an eighth grader who, for her 14th birthday, um, had seen all of her friends with all these dresses that they were wearing for um, their little events, you know, their dances and things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once they wore it once, they weren't going to wear it again. So what did she decide to do? And the movie came out, 27 Dresses. That was the other thing. Uh, oh, so yeah. she decided to have a 27 Dresses party where anybody could bring a dress that they had worn before, and they would um, donate those dresses so um, kids could have dresses for other events. So oh, yeah. It's their treasure. They're those dresses that were such a special time for them that they donated so someone else could have a special time. You know, anything that falls into this category of treasure 
mm-hmm. is a symbol, really. Oh, yeah. Uh, your example of the dresses is a good example. It it symbolizes something. And sometimes we want to hang on to those symbols because of the nostalgia or the meaning that it has for us. But it really gives a lot of meaning to give that, too. It really does. It really does. I thought of another example, too, and I'm going to tell a little story about my wife. She's sure. not here to defend herself. Oh, good. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Vicky is a great example of this, and I remember one of her birthdays. This was several years ago. And on one of her birthdays, she told the kids and me, she said, you know what? I have absolutely everything that I need and most of what I want. So what we're going to do is take whatever we're going to, all this treasure, you know, that we would have given to her as a gift for her birthday, and we're going to go out there and give it to other people. Mm. And just doing that together with the kids left a lasting impression. Isn't that fabulous? It was just a neat experience for a family. It was not a lot, you know, but it, the treasure symbolizes something. And at the very least, think about money, for example. What is money? It's just a little receipt for you having shared your time and talent somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the thing that y'all did in the sense of really as we talk about getting into giving and really creating this habit, we talk about making it simple with the three T's, time, talent, and treasure, and then making it intentional. It's just like your motto, you know, live on purpose. Make it intentional. What Mm -hmm. she did was made it intentional, that this was what she did with her family and created this experience. That's Um, right. You know, it is just such an amazing thing when we intentionally create acts of giving. And Like we said before, they can be very simple, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, just smiling. We make it intentional, and and that helps create making it a habit. Um, John Dryden said, we first make our habits, then our habits make us. And isn't that what we're doing when we're raising our children and raising ourselves still, (laughs) Mm -hmm. is creating these habits? Just like we've taught our kids to brush their teeth, think about seatbelts. Let's think about seatbelts. My son's 20. Ever since he's been in the car, he's had a seatbelt on. He doesn't get in the car without a seatbelt. Yet, Mm -hmm. when I was raised, we didn't have seatbelts. As a matter of fact, my sister came home from the hospital, and we took a trip with her in a shoebox. Right. You know? Now they would be putting, you know, in family court or something, you know? But we didn't know seatbelt. But just think of the lives that have been saved because we've changed a habit. And that's what this act of generosity, this creating this habit of generosity can do. And that's why, you know, I said to you, you said, what's the purpose? What's the mission? Well, it's helping to create generous kids for generations. Mm-hmm. Where the habit is firmly in place. The power of the habit, you know, think about brushing your teeth. Mm-hmm. How often do you forget? To yep. brush? And, and even if you do, how often are you going to forget several times consecutively? Right, because you know what happens if you forget? It's very uncomfortable, isn't it? Right. Yeah, and that's what happens with the habit of giving. When you stop doing it, think if you went, you know, weeks without giving, how would you feel if you created that habit in you? That's Mm -hmm. what happens with our kids. That's what happens with the kids. Just amazing. There's so many neat things that happen when you give. And I want to address really quickly uh, something that came up a little earlier in our discussion about about gratitude, too. Mm -hmm. Because this is the paycheck for the giving. Mm -hmm. And if you're on the receiving end of the giving, how better to to really reward that person than to, to show your gratitude, to thank them, like this lady did in our neighborhood with right. these with these boys that went over and raked her lawn. Yes, that, you know, her writing that note, you know, we've gotten away from our note writing, but that's a fabulous thing to do. And that's also in the sense of touching our heart. It really helps touch our heart and see mm-hmm. that we've done something. What we saw from these kids that wrote on these questionnaires that they did this and I don't know that it made any difference and you know what we saw was their hearts weren't touched Mm -hmm. and isn't that sad giving with no touch 
and and to get hardened to the act of giving. So That's right. we really that touching of our heart is just so important. Well, I want to make sure we've got a few minutes left here, Colleen. I want to make sure that uh, all of our listeners have a way to get a hold of you or to get connected with what you're doing. You have a website connected to this project. Absolutely. And it's, as as I recall, it's generouskids.com. It, that's it. Pretty easy. www.generouskids.com. Generouskids.com. And they can read up on on what it is you're doing with this whole project. They can get connected to the book. I'm also going to put a link up on Live on Purpose Radio uh, where they can click through immediately to buy the book Great. and just make it as easy as we can because I want to get this in the homes of as many parents as we can to start thinking more intentionally. I love what you said about about giving on purpose. And it sounds strangely familiar and, and almost rhymes with living on purpose, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> we like that. You'd we think like we that. might have collaborated on this. Yes, we <laughs> might have. We might have. It makes such a difference in the world. And your your thing about intentional is just it's living intentionally this is giving intentionally. Mm-hmm. If we help create these habits in our children, they will be forever changed. So what's up next for you, Colleen? Where are you going next with this? Well, you know, one of the things that your listeners can do, um, they can contact us at contact us at generouskids.com or Colleen at generouskids.com. And we'd love to hear stories of what families are doing and kids are doing. If you'll see on the website... We're, you know, we listed the story of the 27 dresses because one of the things we know, just like um, the little things in the book where we gave examples of time, talent, and treasure, those are things that all the kids told us about. Um, and also in the back of the book, there's a little, little end chapter about how to raise a selfish kid because they also told us about things like um, parents wanting their them to do community service, dropping them off, and then, you know, going and getting their coffees or going and doing. They want parents involved. They don't necessarily Mm -hmm. want us there with them, but, Mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, we can drive to the site with them, like Habitat for Humanity. They can go with their friends and do their thing. You can go with the adults and do your thing. And isn't that time riding back in the car so precious? Because you've created another experience. Well, you've you've done another give. Pardon? You've given again. Yeah. That's the parent giving their time. And if yes. you want to teach your kids to do this, what better way than to show them by doing it and yeah, doing it for your example, kids? Yeah, we are the example, aren't we? Exactly. That's right. So we'd love to hear stories from your listeners, things that they're doing. We'd love for them to go online and see what other people are doing. It just sparks this get into giving revolution. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's that's going to change the world if we can all do that a little bit more. It's just so easy. It's just so simple. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> we like simple. We do. We do. We it, do. Well, this has been a great conversation, Colleen. I'm so glad that you joined me today on this show. Paul, thank you so much. And thank you for, so much for all the work that you do with Live On Purpose. It is just such a great organization and such a great gift to the world. It really is. Oh, and that's so kind of you to say. And I love that we have a common purpose here in trying to help people to live on purpose, creating a a generation of people who are doing this on purpose. So I want to give one more plug for your website, www.generouskids.com. And my guest today has been Colleen O'Donnell. You can contact Colleen through the website. I'm sure there's a contact link there, right? Right, Colleen at GenerousKids.com. Colleen at GenerousKids.com. Go buy the book. Put it on your shelf. Get it into the hands of the people in your life who are looking to make a bigger difference in this world. And I think that as we all do that and start to create this habit, I love what you said about the habit too because, uh, in fact, one of the things that I've, I've really enjoyed about Strategic Coach is this concept that we already are 100% disciplined to our current set of habits. Yes, we are. Let's we create are. the new habits and, and get this going on purpose. And create generous for generations. Right. We have that opportunity right now. And that's what's going to change the world. Well, this has been fun. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Thank you. 
so much for having me on your show. I want to encourage all of our listeners to go out there and live on purpose. And then we will be back again with another installment of this show in about a week. So go out there and live on purpose, everybody.